What's going on everybody, Mortem here, this time excitedly bringing you some Wasteland 3 content and I figured what better place to start than an in-depth look at character creation now that I've spent some time with the game. The first thing you're going to do when you come up to character creation is potentially select a pair of pre-made characters. You don't have to, but technically you can pick some of these pre-made duos that the developers have made for you. So if you're interested in doing that, they are the Young Rangers, which is Yuri and Spence, and they have the appropriate skills that you can see. Bronco and Kickboy, who have these skills. They are the punk lovers. The father and daughter duo of William and Lee Singh. I hope I'm saying that right. Sorry if I didn't. The mentor and student duo of Dusty and Marie. The tech heads of Chris and also Chris. And those are the pre-made characters. So... Most people, I imagine, are going to want to create custom characters, so we're going to spend a lot more time with that, obviously. Now, you do create two characters when you play this game. These two are your main two. However, you can have a party of up to six. So these guys are just your pre-made characters, and they are the rangers that were sent from Arizona to Colorado per the story. Now, as far as customizing them goes, you click on one of them, and then you go through, for starters, identification. So in the identification tab, you pick their name, their gender, but you can change the voice to either feminine or man regardless. And then you pick the background. So backgrounds are pretty important. This is, of course, your actual background, but also it gives you some pretty significant bonuses. So we're going to go through them. Bookworm will give you 5% extra experience, which I feel like is kind of the default one if you don't know what to pick. Desert Cat will give you plus one perception. Disciple of Metal will give you 15% fire damage bonus. Explodomaniac will give you 15% explosive damage bonuses. Goat Killer will give you a 5% crit chance, which also is a hilarious background and is my personal favorite because 5% crit chance is amazing, but also if you read that background description, it is hilarious. Then we have Grease Monkey, which gives us bonus damage to robots and vehicles. Lethal Weapon, which gives us extra melee damage. Mannerite, which gives us extra kiss ass, which by the way, that is the charm version of this game. That is a speech skill, which is basically a persuasion check. Money Bags gives us barter. Mopey Poet gives us plus 5% evasion. Paladin gives us 10% crit resistance. Raider Hater gives us bonus damage to humans and... From what I've played of the game, they are the most numerous em enemy, so that is a very useful one. Sex Machine, which gives us plus 2.2 2 combat speed, which is funny. Stoner gives us extra status effect resistance. The Boss gives us extra hard ass, which is the Intimidate persuasion check that you would be more familiar with. And Vicious Avenger gives us plus 2 armor penetration. So, those are some of the backgrounds and what they do for you. And then we have our appearance options. I'm not going to go through every single one, but basically you can pick a face, which involves several tattoo options, as well as various skin colors. I did find it hilarious that you could pick a blue and green skin color. Just as a quick aside note, those are options you can pick, and it makes me laugh. Then we have hairstyles, of course, which is just normal stuff. Uh, hairstyles, you pick a color. I'm not going to go over every single appearance option, because it's not really what isometric CRPGs are all about. But, you know, it's hair, so do you. There are quite a few options. I will at least try to show you guys the options, if not literally go through all of them. So here are those. You can, of course, pick the female hairstyles for male as well, so kind of do what you want there. Then you can pick beard. Um, if you are a woman, you do not get the beard options. So, you know, make of that what you will. Then we move on to our helmet. So I do want to mention... This part of uh, character creation, this is not like starting equipment you're picking. This is your actual appearance. So if you spend a lot of time on your face, hair, and beard, and then you cover it up with a helmet, even if you turn show helmet off in the game, you're still going to see this helmet. So with that in mind, make sure you're picking something you actually want to see all the time, because this will become your default face. And there are some pretty cool options. So if you don't want to spend a lot of time building your character's face, you can just like, you know, pick one of these sweet masks and be done with it. 
Then we pick our jacket, of course, and pants. Same thing, this is the clothes you are wearing under whatever armor you are wearing. So if you turn show armor off, it will show these instead. So you can either see a lot of these or none of these, depending on what you want to do. That brings us to armor color. Um, if you're familiar with CRPGs at all, a lot of them do this, where you can pick a color scheme for your uh, either your team or your particular character. And there's usually a primary and a secondary color, and it will color your armor and stuff um, when you get it. So in this particular instance, it is just for your bottom layer of armor, and your top layer of armor can be colored in-game. However, in character creation here, you can pick the primary and secondary color of your bottom layer of normal clothes. And then we have physique, which goes from puny, small, average, tall, huge, gigantic. And then we have our build, which is slender, medium, jacked, muscled, stocky. And then they also have a miniature option, which is awesome. And then lastly, we pick our portrait. Now, depending on whether or not you're male or female, you will get different options here. Um, that said, there are some more robot ones if you're looking for something more gender neutral. Those are always cool. But pick one, move on. And that's it for appearance. And then we pick our starting weapon. So our starting weapon is just that, our starting weapon. This does not affect skills at all. This just tries to give you a weapon appropriate for what you want to do when you start the game. So, you know, if you want to build a sniper, pick a sniper rifle. If you want to be like a shotgun guy, pick a shotgun. If you want to do assault rifles, pick that. But I want to stress, none of this actually affects your skills at all because we're getting into those in just a minute. Now, from there we want to go attributes. So attributes are coordination, luck, awareness, strength, speed, intelligence, and charisma. Of these attributes, awareness and strength are probably the most important because they give you your damage bonuses. Awareness gives you range damage and strength gives you melee damage as well as giving you extra health per level. They call health in this game constitution, just like your base health is called constitution. So if you're losing con, you're losing health. So just think of it that way. But this gives you extra health with the strength. And awareness gives you extra hit chance, perception, and a ranged damage bonus. So those two are your most important because that's where most of your damage is going to be coming from. So just keep that in mind. Then we have uh, coordination, which is your physical condition, self-control, and health. I don't like that they use the word health here because I think that's going to confuse people. Understand that coordination, despite saying it is your health, does not literally give you health. That is what strength does. This does actually give us extra action points per level as well as max action points and status effect resistance as we level it up. And then we have luck. I actually like the way they did luck in this game. So luck is, in a lot of games... Uh, and it just gives you a percent chance to help do extra stuff. However, this game specifically tells you what luck does, which is amazing. It can basically give you uh, extra action chances or um, things will cost you less AP than normal, which is your action points per turn. You will get extra crit chance, you will get extra mega crit chance, extra evade chances, uh, extra crit resistance chance, extra healing, extra money found, extra scrap. So it actually tells you the percent bonus of what luck is actually doing for you, which I think is very helpful. And then awareness and strength we've already covered. Speed is, of course, how fast you move in combat, as well as your dodge chance, as well as your initiative chance when you enter combat. And then we have intelligence. So intelligence gives us crit chance, crit damage, crit heal, crit heal bonus, as well as giving us extra skill points per level for every two intelligence we have. Charisma gives us strike rate, which means our strike abilities, which are a special charge ability that you will build up as you hit things, charges up faster. So strikes are these charge up attacks that change depending on the weapon you have. And basically they're kind of Wasteland 3's version of VATS. So if you hit a bunch of enemies, you'll charge up your strike rate and then you'll be able to actually pick a specific body part to aim at with the strike ability and do extra damage as well as potentially extra status effects. And that's what the strikes are. This also gives you a leadership range, which means your leadership bonus will actually affect people farther out. It also gives you extra experience as well as giving you extra mission reward things from like gold and stuff. So that is what all of your attributes are. Again, awareness and strength are probably your most important because that's where we are getting our damage from. You do get attributes basically every level after I think it's level two. 
you will get one attribute point to spend, so these will be increasing after character creation. This is not final, you will get extra to spend. And that brings us to skills. A lot of things to cover here in skills. We are gonna go through all of them, but before we do that, I want to mention that some skills mention that it gives you a perk available. I want to stress that picking up the skills here in combat does not immediately give you these perks that are available. Having two automatic weapons, for instance, just makes this puncturing shot perk available to purchase once you unlock perks and can start using your perk points which are given every few levels to then put into puncturing shot it does not give you puncturing shot straight away so i just wanted to clarify that before we jump into it so i'm not going to cover a lot of the perks but basically the more you put into a combat skill or for instance you can then get perks associated with that combat skill that will let you do extra stuff like a puncturing shot for instance so uh, it's pretty straightforward, to be honest with you. You know, you just put points into that combat skill and then you can buy perks, which will give you extra abilities and combat options, basically, which makes sense. Automatic weapons is your submachine guns and assault rifles, and they also recommend attributes for you, depending on which combat skill you want to use. Then we have big guns, which is heavy machine guns, flamethrowers, and any oversized weapons. We have brawling, which is fist weapons brass knuckles that kind of stuff it gives us extra combat speed as well as weapon hit chance melee combat is of course your bladed and blunt weapons and gives us hit chance for both of those small arms is handguns and shotguns which i thought was weird but also gives you hit chance for all of those Sniper rifles is, of course, for sniper rifles. So, all pretty self-explanatory. Uh, the only weird one, honestly, in my opinion, was small arms being uh, the shotgun skill, which is strange. So just keep that in mind, I suppose. Now, the rest of these skills, outside of the combat skills, are honestly a little more important. So, they give you extra options and shit to enact with the actual environment, as opposed to just, you know, combat specifically. Now, they will sometimes affect combat, but they also affect the environment as you're traversing it and not just combat. So Animal Whisperer will allow you to tame friendly animals to follow you and temporarily tame hostile animals. So you will encounter animals throughout the game, and if you have Animal Whisperer, you can make them your companions. And in combat, you will get an ability, at level 3 that is, to actually train animals mid-combat. So if you're fighting an animal or you're going up against someone's pet, you can use this ability to temporarily train their animals to help you instead, that kind of thing. Then, of course, we have explosives, which gives us uh, extra mine and landmine damage as well as lets us disarm landmines and stuff as we come across as well as be more proficient in using them. First aid is very important. Somebody on your team needs first aid because this is where all your healing comes from. And some of the healing items actually have a first aid requirement as well as giving you contextual options in conversation about first aid. Sneaky shit is, of course, uh, disarming alarms, evading detection, spotting hidden objects, as well as dodging our extra damage, that is, to unaware enemies. Basically just makes you more difficult to see. It's kind of like your sneak skill, basically. And then there is Weird Science. So Weird Science is fun. You will find a lot of elemental and just interesting weapons and stuff. And more often than not, if it has a special like weird effect, it comes up under Weird Science. For instance, I have found shrink grenades that shrink enemies. Obviously, you're going to need Weird Science skill to use those. This is... Honestly, in my opinion, it should probably be up in the combat skills rather than down here with general skills because weird science is like a requirement to wield some weapons. So you'll find these like elemental weapons and stuff that do all sorts of crazy things, but you'll have to have a weird science uh, points to use it. So do with that information what you will. If you want to use those unique weapons, you are going to need weird science. Now, Exploration skills are just that. Used mostly in exploration, but, you know, you'll see them around. Now, armor modding is very useful. Um, with every point, you can install mods of increasing difficulty into your armor to give them more effects. Lock picking does exactly that. You can pick locks and crack safes. Nerd stuff is uh, hacking computers and hacking robots. If you put enough points into it, you can actually do this in the middle of combat. For instance, targeting override. But nerd stuff will let you hack computers and hack robots, as well as give you a skill that will let you do it 
in combat. So if you're up against robots, you can hack a robot and make other enemies attack it, that kind of thing. Mechanics, of course, gives us damage against robots, vehicles, and synths. You can fix generators and machines. Your repair kits on your vehicle are more effective. Things like that. Survival gives us damage against animals and mutants, as well as helps with the overworld map encounters. So I haven't played too much of the world map, but honestly, I don't think there's that many of these. But the damage versus animals and mutants is pretty solid. Can't complain about that. And then there is toaster repair. So if you're unaware, there's a bit of a running gag in CRPGs to have a toaster repair skill. However, they have actually made this pretty useful. There are, in fact, toasters that will need repair throughout the world. And when you repair them, you will find items inside of them sometimes, which are pretty useful. More often than not, they are for your utility slot, which is like a, a trinket, basically, and it gives you extra boosts, and repairing toasters will help you find those sometimes, as well as extra items the more you put into it. It's a bit of a joke skill, but they did find a way to actually make it relevant to what you're doing. And then we have weapon modding. Each point in weapon modding, of course, allows us to install more intricate mods, as well as increases the scrap we get from field stripping weapons, which basically means selling them for parts. But basically, we get to install better weapon mods, making our weapons do more damage. And then that brings us to our social skills, which are barter, hard-ass, kiss-ass, and leadership. So barter is, of course, selling and buying things from vendors. Hard-ass, like I mentioned, is basically your intimidation skill checks. Kiss-ass is basically your charm skill checks and uh, dialogue, obviously. And leadership gives us extra ally skills to our companions and or at pre-made rangers that you can recruit so you'll get bonuses to damage crit chance healing all that sort of stuff with leadership so keep in mind i suppose now i do want to mention before we leave the skill page that frankly the combat skills the general skills the exploration skills and the social skills all of them together might tell you that you're not going to be able to master everything As I mentioned, you're going to have a party of up to six people. Try to make each one of them really good at something and diversify all your skills as much as possible. Like someone should have first aid. Someone should be good at explosives. Someone should probably be able to sneak. If you want to have somebody in weird science, that's fine. You're probably going to want somebody who can lockpick and hack computers or somebody who can mod your armor for you and somebody who can mod your weapons for you. So just keep these things in mind. Now, to explain how they level up real quick before we carry on, each next tier costs more skill points to use. You get a set amount every level depending on your intelligence, and each level costs more and more to upgrade. So you can see here level 6 will cost you 10 skill points, whereas level 7 will cost you 13 skill points, and so on and so forth. So... That's just how that works. You get a set amount of skill points per level, which is based off of your intelligence, so keep that in mind. And that brings us, lastly, to our quirk. So quirks are taking a penalty for also an advantage. So for instance, Blunderer will give you extra melee damage, but your crit chance gets a negative 50% permanent disadvantage. So things like that. Then we get Bop Bag, which will give us extra armor at the cost of combat speed. We have Circus Freak, which will give us extra combat speed and crit resistance at the loss of evasion and detection time and sneak. We get Death Wish, which gives us extra action points every turn, but we're not allowed to wear armor. Doomsday Prepper, which means we are extra resilient to status effects, but we cannot read skill books, because you will find skill books throughout the world. Lone Wolf, you will get an extra 20% initiative, but leadership will provide you no benefits. Medical Marvel will give you extra constitution per level, but you won't be able to be revived mid-combat. Mime will make it very hard to detect you, but you will have less health and your throwing range will be worse. Poindexter, you will get a bonus skill point every two levels up. This is in addition to your intelligence boost obviously at the cost of constitution per level as well as base then there is prospector you will occasionally get valuable gold while digging but you won't be able to use one of your initial two quick slots then we have pyromaniac which gives us extra fire and explosive damage bonus 
but you have a 15% chance to catch on fire when you're using them. Sadomasochist, which means you get an extra 33% damage taken, but you also deal 33% more melee and range damage. Then we get Serial Killer. Serial Killer I'm a big fan of, actually, which is weird to say. But you put this on a sniper who's going to be getting a lot of killing blows. Every time they kill someone, they get an extra three action points for that turn once per turn. So basically, you can use your sniper to actually you know, do the finishing blow on somebody. Then they'll get an extra three action points to use that turn, which is really good. And, but it costs you a base one action point, which I feel like is probably the best value for loss ratio here of these quirks, but you know, do you. And then we have two pump jump. You can start combat with an extra action points for the first couple of turns, but after the first couple of turns, you lose an action point as well as 15% hit chance for six turns. Varangian blood, when an ally is downed in combat, you enter a rage gaining 100% critical chance plus three action points per turn. However, once the rage is ended, you get an action point loss for the next couple turns. So I can see where this would be useful, but you know, you'd have to use it sparingly. Then you have Waste Roamer. You get 100% resistances to basically all uh, status effects, but you earn way less experience. So you'll become immune to status effects in a lot of ways, but you'll learn significantly less experience. So I could see why someone would want to use that, but again, do you. And then we have Way of the Squeezins, which gives you extra 50% damage while drunk, but your normal damage is minus 20% across the board. So those are all the quirks. You can only pick one of them. You don't get to pick multiple. You only get to pick the one. So there you go. And with that, guys, that is basically how you're going to build a character. So obviously, you're going to want to get all of those things together. So just to kind of take you through something real quick, if I wanted to make a sniper, I'd put, you know, obviously my starting weapon as a sniper rifle. Attributes, I'd want to focus on awareness. I probably wouldn't worry as much about strength because I'm a sniper. I shouldn't be in combat, so I'm not necessarily worried about how much uh, health that I have, per se, outside of, like, the normal range. I'm going to want to pick up some intelligence because that's where I'm getting my crit damage from, which as a sniper is going to be important to me. And then potentially speed, because speed gives you uh, the first hit in combat through the initiative perk. So something to keep in mind there. As well as potentially coordination, because coordination will give us extra action points. Now, it costs like six action points to fire a sniper rifle, which is more than normal. So the more action points you can get, the better. Now, as for skills, obviously you want to pick up at least one point in sniper rifle straight away. I will say you don't necessarily need to worry about this like right away. You can upgrade this later, but just right off the bat, you should definitely put at least one point in the thing you want to do the most. So from there, I would pick uh, general skills or exploration skills, that kind of stuff. Personally, uh, I like making my main character like the lock picker and hacker person, so I would probably put some points in lock picking as well as hacking. But again, I get more points later on, so it's not necessarily super important what I do here. In fact, I would actually say that the points you pick here in character creation for your general skills and st- like uh, you know the skill page in general isn't as important as the ones you pick per level when you're getting more points and it more directly affects what you can do. So, and again, keep in mind, you're going to have six characters across the board. So what one person has is fine. Just don't try to do everything because you'll fail at it. And then from there we go, Quirk. Me personally, I like the serial killer one for a sniper like i said because you get extra action points for each kill once per combat and as a sniper we're going to be killing stuff a lot so that's basically how you can kind of set up a character to start the game and then again you do this twice because you have two characters you can make right off the bat two that kind of complement each other and then just a little farther into the game you can of course pick up your other four potential party members and then go from there so There you go, guys. There is an in-depth look at character creation for Wasteland 3. I certainly hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe, leave me a message down below, do what you got to do, but may you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.